Hello everybody, welcome to the slow, steady, hopefully informative, stratomatic, super advanced playthrough. I'm not calling it a tutorial, I'm calling it a playthrough, but I'm going to go really slow in super advanced. And when I get to an, a part uh, that I think needs more detail, I will pause the game and go over the explanation as thoroughly as I can for what is going on. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to kind of briefly touch over things as the game is going on. The game I chose to play is kind of irrelevant because the main point of this is to go over the rules, not really who's playing the game. But I took the opening day game from last year in Cincinnati between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Cincinnati Reds. I wasn't going to do any accoutrements at all. I was going to just do a straight out pen and paper and and cards and dice and not even use the dice tray and just be as analog as I possibly could. But then I thought about it. I was like, well, I kind of, for my own purposes, whether anybody else enjoys it or not, I like the accoutrements. So I'm going to go with those and, and hopefully they turn out okay. I did print out the score sheet uh, off the uh, Baseball Sim Research site which has the lineups and the pitcher already pre-filled. does not have the ratings. Now, I, I normally would go in and pre-fill all the ratings, but I'm not going to do that because I want to show the cards on some of these ratings. So, uh, But normally I would do that. So that leads into what I would suggest doing to, before you start a super advanced game. There's two things that really um, need to be addressed and looked at. Um, and some decisions that need to be made as well as to how you want to play it. First thing is ballpark effects. So Super Advanced has the ballpark effects, but there are two types of ballpark effects. There are the consistent generic ballpark effects, or there is the weather ballpark effects. So which do you want to do? Do you want to do weather, or do you want to do just the generic? So I'm going to do the weather. And this game was a day game in uh, March in Cincinnati. So day game in, in March, April, May kind of falls in with that March because they don't have March on here, but pretty much begin the season. So right here, day game, we're looking in this little box right here. If we roll a 1 to 8 on the D20, it means we have good weather, and we're going to use the top row for singles and home runs. If we get a 9 to 15, that is average weather. I'm going to use the middle row. If we roll a 16 to 20, it's bad weather. I'm going to use the bottom row. There are also, you see little asterisks beside some of the stadiums. And that's for the robbing the home run rule. And it says here, uh, an asterisk to the left of the team indicates that a home run cannot be robbed for a lefty batter. An asterisk to the right of the team indicates that a home run cannot be robbed for a righty batter. All right, well, Cincinnati... Right here, Cincinnati, it is saying since the asterisk is to the right, that means any ball hit to right field, apparently the wall is too high for it to be robbed, according to Stratomatic, although in the picture uh, it looks pretty low. But this is not, I mean, this is they may have updated this, this stadium. This is an older picture of Great American Ballpark, so they could have uh, done the stadium. It looks like to me the left side is the one that can't be robbed. So I'm not sure why they do it that way, but... Um, according to what I'm looking at here, the left the left field cannot be robbed. The right field could because of the fact – I'm just looking at the picture. So, um, Or did I, did I misread? Let me, let me double-check it again. Uh, okay, lefty batter. I'm sorry. So it means the home run cannot be – that doesn't mean right field. It means the right-handed batter. So, yeah, when a right-handed batter is up, we cannot rob home runs, which is why the asterisk is on the right-hand side because that left field wall is just too high. So – that's what that means. When it's on the right-hand side, it means right-handed batter. It does not mean right field. It means right-handed batter cannot be robbed. So we are going to play robbing home runs in this game if it comes up. But when a right-handed batter is batting, the home run cannot be robbed. Okay? It's just all that saying with that, uh, with that asterisk there. And it says, note, this applies to all home run flyout splits, not just ballpark home run chances. So if we look at... If we look at, let me find one that doesn't have the ballpark, but just has the out. Find a card that has that on his car, on the player card. All right, let's look at, 
where they all seem to have the home run with the outs with the ballpark. I don't see one that's separate. Not that I can see. Everything here has got the ballpark diamond shots on it with the... Oh, here we go. My bad. Right here. Jason Vosler. Let's look at Jason Vosler's card. You see right here in the 2-5, he's got a home run 1 and a 2-20 to 20 on a flyout B. So this would also be a robbing the home run chance if we roll within the range of the robbing the home run. And it also depends on the, the, the defense of the outfield. And I'll get to that if that comes up. Um, and I probably will. I may manufacture it in the game if it doesn't come up just to show you what, it, what it's doing. So not only ballpark home run chances with the fly out and the home run, but also regular home run chances with the ballpark and the home run. The time you do not rob home runs in any situation, you never rob home runs when it's a home run and the other split is another hit, like a triple or a double, that you do not rob home runs. So in this case here, 2-4, there is no chance to rob a home run here at all. Okay, so we're going to roll ballpark weather effects. And again, we are looking at Cincinnati day game. We'll call it April. It's really, I believe it was in March, but they don't have March on the, on the sheet. So we're going to roll here and see what we get. First things first is to roll a D20. And we get a 1. So that means we got good weather. So good weather means right here, singles, lefties and righties. So that means left-handed hitters get a single on a 1 to 8. And right-hander hitters get a single on a 1, 2, and 11. So we write down the score sheet. I will write down the score sheet. And it says here, lefties. Let's do lefties are, we said lefties were 1 to 8. And righties were 1 to 11. For ballpark singles, which are denoted by a uh, upside-down triangle. All right. Now, home runs, since they're good weather, 20 and 20. That means if we get a ballpark home run chance, since we have good weather here in Cincinnati, the stadium's conducive to home runs. That means we get a home run regardless. So we don't even really have to write it down because we know home run ballpark chances are going to be home runs all the time unless there's a robbing home run chance that comes up. But pretty much it's going to be a home run chance more than what you would think it would be. All right, so that's the first thing I would do before you start the game is to, to get the ballpark effects out of the way. Second thing you want to do is getting the pitcher and catcher hold factors out of the way. Starting pitcher for Cincinnati is Hunter Green. Starting pitcher for Pittsburgh is Mitch Keller. So we look at Hunter Green, and he has a plus five hold rating, and we also compare that with the catcher for Cincinnati. In this case, that is Stevenson, Tyler Stevenson. So we look at Tyler Stevenson's card. Pull his numbers out. Tyler Stevenson right here. He has an arm of zero. So we just are stuck with this plus five. Now, the factors between the catcher and the pitcher can go anywhere from plus five to minus five. Had Stevenson been a plus two, that would have made that a plus seven, but plus five is as high as you can go. Same with the minus. If he had been a minus five hold and a minus two throwing arm, minus five is as low as you can go. So in this case, it's a plus five. So that means any time Pittsburgh's got a runner that wants to try to steal, the hold factor, pitcher and catcher, is going to be a plus five. Now, again, if they're holding the runner, that would subtract it by two, but initially it's a plus five. So beside Hunter Green, I'm going to put plus five. On, that's on the score sheet. I'm going to put plus five for Hunter Green. Now let's look at the Pittsburgh Pirates catcher. And the Pittsburgh Pirates catcher in this game is Austin Hedges. And Austin Hedges is a minus one. Mitch Keller is a zero. So aggregate there is a minus one. So obviously Pittsburgh's got a much better chance of holding runners on trying to steal for Cincinnati than vice versa. So we'll have a minus one factor. And again, with him being held, if he's holding, you're usually holding a guy that's going to steal, that would make it actually a minus three. So that's the two things I would do and mark those on the score sheet accordingly. And that's how I would suggest getting started. All right, you see the starting lineups and the bullpens and the bench and whatnot. Now, unfortunately for Pittsburgh, 
and a couple guys from Cincinnati. They opened the season with guys that didn't get a whole lot of playing time. So, O'Neal Cruz and Smith Njiga, Njigba are both going to have computer cards. So, I've got computer cards printed out for O'Neal Cruz and Smith Njigba. So, those are the two guys in the starting lineup for Pittsburgh that have computer generated, generated cards. Cincinnati does not have anybody in their starting lineup, but they do have guys in their bullpen with computer generated cards, and they will come up. Uh, actually, I'll probably try to use those last just because because <laughs> they're annoying sometimes. But anyway, that's the initial start of what I would do. Of course, I've got the rule book in front of me. I've got the super advanced fielding chart in front of me. Um, got my dice here. I'm just happy to use Cincinnati red colors, but that's really irrelevant, just more aesthetics. And I think now we are ready to go. So I'm going to go, for, again, for experienced Stratomac uh, people that play super advanced or whatnot, this may be very tedious and boring, even maybe for some of the advanced Stratomac players. But uh, for those that want to take that step from advanced to super advanced, hopefully this will be of some use to you. And again, this is a prelim to the 1973 NBC Game of the Week, which starts on Saturday, April the 6th. That's opening day. Again in Cincinnati, San Francisco Giants and Cincinnati Reds. And that will be on Super Advanced as well the whole season. All right, so now we are ready to go. So Hunter Green, I'm going to put his card here. I'll put the pitcher card here. And the batter card will be there. And if we get base runners, I have little tokens to mark base runners. Got the outs here, the line score here, so you can know what the score is at all times, know what the outs are at all times, and know what the base runners are at all times. All right, I think that's pretty much it. Now, uh, what I like to do, some people like to roll the D20 with the 3D6s. I, I think in this instance, I'm going to roll the D20 separately, um, just to make it a little more simpler. So... We'll roll the D20 when and if it is needed. Right now, we have O'Neill Cruz facing Hunter Green. O'Neill Cruz is a left-handed hitter. I know it might be hard to see the computerized card, but I'll read it off for you. I'm trying to get as low as I can on the cards but and, and still keep the peripherals of the accoutrements. Maybe that's my detriment. Maybe I should have done it the other way around, but hopefully I can talk everybody through this thing, and we'll see what happens. So first pitch... Hunter Green to O'Neill Cruz. 310. 310. So we go to O'Neill Cruz. Hunter Green is a right handed thrower. So we go to O'Neill Cruz, column three, and number 10. It's a ground ball, second base B with a plus, but nobody's on base, so it's just simply a ground ball to second. And there's one away. So O'Neill Cruz is retired 4 to 3 if you're scoring at home. And why wouldn't you be? All right, so Brian Reynolds, the Left fielder is scheduled up second against Hunter Green. We get a 3-9. 3-9 is a strikeout right there. So two down right away. And that's why I don't like to roll the D20 with these. When nobody's on base, I think it's simpler just to roll the three D6s and then bring in the D20 if needed. Now, of course, once you get people on base, then it's a whole other story. you got the Havoc roll and everything else going on. So here's the designated hitter, Andrew McCutcheon, longtime Pirate. We get a 410 first time off the pitcher card. Hunter Green, 410 is a ground ball, third base X. So now we're going to our very first defensive check on the super advanced defensive chart. And it's a ground ball to third base X. First things first, third baseman, who is he and what's his rating? For Cincinnati, it is Spencer Steer. We go to Spencer Steer's card. Spencer Steer at third base is a 3E21. 3E21. On the Super Advanced chart, unlike the Advanced chart where you check either the range or an error rating, we're checking both on Super Advanced. So the D20 is going to tell us about the range, and the 3D6 is going to tell us about the error. So for the range play, he is a 3. So we saw he was a 3, so we go to the Super Advanced chart under the range section, and this is for all the infielders. We look at a number three, because that's his range. It's a three. We're going to roll one D20. If it falls in the category of one to four, it's going to be a single. If it falls into the category of five 
through 20, it's going to be out of some sort. Now, the, the pound sign here is only if the infielders are holding somebody, and we haven't gotten to that part yet, so with nobody on, we'll just ignore that. So basically, for the range, he, all he has to do is make sure you roll a 5 or higher, and he will get to this ball. So first things first, we'll roll the range and make sure it is 5 or higher which it is. It's a 19, which technically means it's a G1. And now we're going to roll the for the error check, and we said his error rating was, Spencer Steer, was an E21. So we now go to third base on the defensive chart. Third base, and we're looking for E21. E21, and the error chances are 6, 11, 16, 15, and 18. That means if the three D6s match one of these numbers, it will be an error. Either an E1 for a one base error or an E2 for a two base error under E21. So in order to make the play, he's got to avoid rolling a 6, 11, 16, 15, or 18. And if you roll a 5, it's a rare play. So we're going to roll all three and add them up. And we get a total of 9. So 9 under E21, there is no 9 listed here, which means he makes the play. It's a good play by Spencer Steer, and the inning is over. It's a G1, so technically what you would do at that point, once you found out it was a G1, you come over to the symbols chart under G1 where it says uh, it's, not, it's not a rare play, it's not an error, it's a no. So it says refer to the following chart and look up the final result. So bases were empty. The infield was normal, so that means the batter is out. Simple as that, 5-3 ground out. But it also tells you about if it's a double play, fielder's choice, runner advance, whole nine yards. But once you get the result here, you come over here to the corresponding chart, whether it's G1, G2, G3, whatever, and that tells you what happens on the final result. So it's simply going to be a ground ball to Spencer Steer to end the inning, and the Pirates go quickly, one, two, three, and they're top of the first. We go to the bottom of the first here at Great American Ballpark. It is Pittsburgh nothing, and Cincinnati Reds coming to bat against Mitch Keller. Mitch Keller on the mound, and he'll be facing leadoff man, second baseman Jonathan India. Again, I'm going to issue rolling to 20 until somebody gets on base or in case I need it on split chance after the fact. All right, 1-4. One, 1-4, four. One, four, and we get to the ball. There you go. We got an upside-down triangle. It is a ballpark singles check. In our chart, we already saw that a right-handed hitter, it's a 1 to an 11, will get him a single. So 1 to an 11 is a single. So we'll roll a D20. If we get a 1 through an 11, it's a single. If we get a 12 or higher, he is out. Now, some people say, some people like to play, that if the ballpark is an out, then a right-handed hitter lines to short and a left-handed hitter lines to second. I don't play that way. Not on this result. If the original result is an out without the ballpark, then I stick with this out result. If the ballpark fail is on a single result, then I do the line out to short, line out to second. But in this case for me, if this, if this fails, I do not count it as a line out to short. I count it as a foul out to second. I'm sorry, foul out to the catcher because that's where it is. But that's my own thing. I mean, it really doesn't matter unless, especially with nobody on base, it really doesn't matter. What we're looking for it, for India to get a hit is a 1 through an 11. He gets a 9, so he got a base hit, so it's, it came out to be a moot point anyway. So Jonathan India reaches, and now we can start doing some things because we got a guy on base. We have a man on base, so that means we can start doing things. First thing we've got to figure out is do we want to try to get a jump to get a steal with Jonathan, Jonathan India. In the advanced game, you would look at the letter grade, but not in super advanced. Super advanced, you come over to this number, and we got a number here. That number is the result of two D6s. So if we roll two D6s and we roll a six, that means India gets the jump. The reason why he only has one number there is they're trying to minimize the number of stolen bases to match his real-life result. In real life, he stole 14 bases, caught twice in 454 bats. So if they gave him too much of a jump where there was too many numbers here, he ended up stealing about 20 or 30 bases. So they gave him the six to see if he can get the jump. 
I want to go ahead and try for the steal just for just because I want to show the you know the play. It's not necessarily maybe the best strategy in the world, but I'm going to do it anyway. So what we're looking at right here to get a jump is a six. So that's before we even do any of the pitcher stuff, the pitcher catcher hold range or anything. It's, we're first things first is trying to get the jump. And if he gets the jump successfully, he has to steal. There is no turning back at that point. So he's got to try to get the jump. And we do that with two D6s. And the two D6s have to equal a six. But there's a caveat. You also roll the D20. If in attempting to get the jump, we roll a one, that means he's potentially picked off. And we check his pickoff, and I'll go through that process as well. If we roll a two, that means the pitcher potentially is balking. And it could be a balk involved. If we get anything other than a one or two, then it's irrelevant. We just look at these numbers. So for, for our purposes, we're going to see if Jonathan India can steal. Or get the jump, I should say. And we need a six to do it. And we get a six. Boy, how, is, how lucky is that? I just rolled a six. There's no ten there, so don't worry about a pickoff or a balk. But he does get the jump. It's a six. So now, what does that mean, getting a jump? Well, when you get a jump, you go to the first number that's listed here. That means the, his steal number with the jump, and that's a 19. All right, he's being held on, so that's going to re reduce that by 2 to a 17. And then we add on the pitcher-catcher-hold factor, which is a minus 1 that we already figured before the game started, which drops him to a 16. So that means now on a 1 to 16, India will steal second base. If we roll a 1, 2, or 3 on the D20, that means it's a potential catcher throwing error as well. But a 1 to 16, he will be safe. And it's 11, so he is safe. So Jonathan India successfully steals second base. Now, let's suppose on that attempted steal that we had rolled a 1. So i got to manufacture some of the stuff because it's never going to come up if I don't. Let's suppose when we were trying to get the jump, that uh, we got this result for a six. Not that it really matters. We got a one here, so we could have had a we could have had a, a seven, and it wouldn't have mattered. It, you don't have to match this number for this to take effect. This controls the potential pickoffs. Now, how do you know whether it's picked off or not? Well, there's a second set of there's another set of numbers, secondary numbers, which you use when you don't get the lead or it's a pickoff chance. So. If he's potentially could be picked off, we roll the d20 again. If the number is 1 to 11, he gets back safely. And he can't get the jump, and he's got to stay there. If we roll a 12 or higher, he would get picked off. So in this case, he would get back in time because the 5 is less than the 11. But that's how that pickoff works on the stolen bases. But in this case, he was successful in his stolen base attempt. So India not only gets a ballpark single, but he steals second base. And now he is in scoring position with nobody out for the center fielder, T.J. Friedel. Now, with the runner on base, that's where we go back to the D20 roll for what I call or like to call the Havoc roll. And what the Havoc roll is basically, much like the pickoff roll, we're checking to see if we roll a 1 or a 2. If we roll a 1 on the D20, it is a possible uh, wild pitch on the pitcher. Then we re-roll and check his wild pitch rating. He's a 5. So if we roll a 1, we re-roll re the 20 again. If we got a 5 or less, it would be a wild pitch. If we get a 2, if we happen to get a 2 on the runner on base, and this uh, I said I was going to start showing this stuff in the rule book, and I failed to do that. So let me let me show it to you in the rule book so you can look at, look at it for yourself later on if you want. I am looking at rule 29.1 on page 13 of the rule book when it says when pitcher when pitching to batters. And it says here in bullet point B, if the 20-sided die rolls a 1, a wild pitch may occur. Okay? If the 20-sided roll is a 2, a balk or pass ball may occur. So we roll the white 6-sided die first. If it comes up 1, 2, or 3, it's a balk check. If it's a 4, 5, or 6, it's a pass ball check. So it's a rule number 29.1 on page number 13 of the newest rule book. And that's what we check on. So we're going to roll and see if we get a 1 or a 2. I like to call it the Havoc roll. 14, nothing happening, so we can drive on. All right, so now he's going to pitch to TJ Friedel. 
as normal. Infield is they're, they're well, you've got to declare whether you're holding runner on. That's the one thing. As a defense, you got to declare: Are you holding Jonathan India on? India runs at a 19. He runs at a 19. So with speed like that, you would think they'd be holding him on. So what does that mean to hold him on? That means either the shortstop or the second baseman is responsible for holding this guy on. And it will say that in the advanced sheet if you're not sure. Right here, super advanced holding runner chart. It says here, runner on second, left-handed batter, the shortstop is responsible for holding the runner. Runner on second, right-handed batter, second baseman is responsible. So in this case, since Friedel is a lefty, shortstop O'Neill Cruz will be the one holding on the runner. So if we send something to O'Neill Cruz and a ground ball X chance, then that's, that's where that pound sign could come into play where he's actually having to hold the runner. In this case, with a lefty batter, second baseman is not affected. Had he been a righty, it'd be flip-flopped. So that's we're holding him on, so that's what we got to be cognizant of is the shortstop O'Neill Cruz is doing the holding. All right, Keller to Friedel. We had a 1-8, and that's a split chance. 1-14 to 14 is a single with one star. 15-20 to 20 is a line out to second. So we're going to roll the D20 and see if we get a single or a line out to second. And we get a 16, which is a line out to second base for out number one. Now, some games have a provision where you, with a runner on second and a liner to second, the guy gets doubled off. Strat does not have that. Uh, factor so it's just one out and we move on to the next batter which is Jake Fraley the designated hitter so with one out Jake Fraley and with the runner on uh, still on base we go through the same process running that havoc roll we're looking for a one or a two or we just ignore it we get an eight so we just ignore it okay now whoops now Fraley and of course he's still being held on by the shortstop O'Neill Cruz so here's Fraley 312 for Fraley. That is a walk. So Fraley will draw the base on balls, and that'll put runners at first and second with only one out, but but it does set up a double play. That's the one benefit for Pittsburgh is it does set up a double play for Tyler Stevenson, who does ha hit into some double plays. He's got some A ground ball A's on his card. However, he's got some pluses on his card too, so got to be cognizant of that with the holding the runners. So again, India is being held, but this time with the right-handed battery is being held by the second baseman, uh, Jiwon Bay. So Bay is holding the runner on Stevenson. But we roll again for a one or a two. This is what makes the super advanced game take a little bit longer because every time somebody's on base, you roll this, what I call, havoc roll. There's a three, so nothing happening because we got past the one and the two. All right, so Tyler Stevenson against Mitch Keller. We get a 6-9, so we go to Keller, and that is a strikeout. 6-9 is a strikeout. Out number two. Now, one thing I did not do before the game was check injury chances for pitchers. Um, I'm kind of, I would be playing in this situation, you know, like a season replay. I wouldn't necessarily do that. Uh, however, if you wanted to do it, I will show how to do it. There is a number beside the roster sheet of each pitcher. In this case, Green has a three right here. And for Pittsburgh, Keller has a zero. That means he cannot be injured. But he's got a three, does Mr. Green. So what does a three mean? Well, three, if we look at the rule book, an injury chance, a three. A three means if we roll a 610, he's subject to injury we roll a 610, we check on the injury chart and see if he's got, if he can potentially be injured. So I guess maybe I'll do that just to try to include everything. So got to keep in mind, Hunter Green is a 610. So if we roll a 610 for Hunter Green, we'll be checking injuries. But in this case, we don't have to worry about it. So Tyler Stevenson is your batter. We already did the havoc and nothing happened. With two outs, the infield is back to normal depth. They're still holding the runner on, though. Oh, Stevenson struck out. My bad. Forgot to swap out Stevenson. That's the thing. I'm <laughs> trying to show this, go through all these rules and uh, forgetting what's happening in the game. So two outs, two on. 
My little base running guy there got uh, mixed up. Mr. Vossler, I think it was. Or Fraley, rather. Fraley's at first base, and he got confused. All right, so now... Hold on, Tabby is invaded, so I need to uh, pause the video for a quick second. Okay, sorry about that. Tabby came in and interrupted, and now she's back outside, so hopefully... Or back outside the room, I should say. So hopefully we can get going. Jason Vossler is your batter, first baseman. And again, we got to roll the Havoc with the runner on base. 15, nothing happening. All right, now with Vossler lefty batting, that means the shortstop Cruz is the one responsible for holding the runner. We get a 4-5 against Keller, lefty batter for Vossler. 4-5 is a strikeout, so that's going to end the inning. So Keller gets out of it without any damage. And we go through the first inning with no score from Great American Ballpark. Reds leave two on. And that comes back to bite it. Might come back to bite them later on. We'll see. Of course, the purpose of this game is not really caring who wins or loses. It's just to try to show the rules. And uh, hopefully I don't screw them up. All right, so top of the second. And again, this is just me. With nobody on, I'm not going to roll the D20 unless it's necessary. A lot of people like to roll it with the with the 3D6s, and it's perfectly acceptable to do stuff. But I wait until there's a split chance because it just looks a little busy on the tray that way. So here's Carlos Santana, switch hitter against Hunter Green. 2-9, right-handed is a walk. So we get a leadoff walk to Santana. And he's not one to really try to go anywhere. He had six steals without being caught, but he has to roll a two to get the jump. If he gets the jump, he's a 20. If he doesn't get the jump, he has to try with a six. So really, at this point, I'm not going to try uh, to to do anything with Santana. I'm going to leave him there. They will hold him on. I'm going to hold everybody on, particularly with the plus five from Hunter Green. The, the catcher, Stevenson, needs all the help he can get. So he needs that minus two for holding people on. So they will hold him on. Now we've got Smith and Jigba, and again, he only had 32 at-bats all season, but he started on opening day, so he's there uh, with a left-handed batter on and a runner at first, according to the chart. When we have that, runner on first, let me show it real quick, runner on first and a left-handed batter, that means first base and shortstop are holding the runners. So first baseman, in this case, Vossler, and the shortstop, Barrero, are, hold, are responsible for holding the runners. Now, Havoc roll, first of all, nothing happening. All right. Green with the pitch. 1-7, and that is a strikeout. Strikeout on Smith and Jigba's card. So, strikeout after Santana walks. We get a strikeout of Smith and Jigba. And now we go to Key Brian Hayes. Same situation. Gets to be repetitive after a while. Nothing happening there. Now with the right-handed batter is the first baseman holding the runner and the second baseman holding over here. Because they they don't want to use a shortstop a hole because they're afraid to pull the ball. So Green, 6-5, and that's a ground ball shortstop X. But again, with the right-handed batter, the shortstop is not one of the ones holding the runners on. So he's not affected at all on this. So we're going straight to the shortstop. For his defensive check, that is Barrero. So we look at Barrero's card. Jose Barrero is a 4-E14, so not very good. So a 4. A 4 means in order to get to this ball, it has to be a 7 or higher on the D20. Anything above that, and it's going to be a base hit. So Barrero needs an 8 or higher. He got a 9, so that's okay, I guess. It is a G3 with a pound sign, but again, that's only if he's responsible for holding the runner, which he is not. So he's G3 pound on the nine. So that means a G3 means he will get to it, but the runner will advance automatically. Whether there's an error or not, he's going to advance automatically. So we know that part. It's going to be a run. Only play is going to be at first base. But now we're checking his error chances, and the error chances on Barrero is an E14. So we go to our shortstop, error chances, under E14, 
And chances for an error are 4, 15, and 17. Anything else, he will make the play. So he's got a void of 4, 15, or 17. And he did. It's 10. So he makes the play for the second out. Key Brian Hayes is out. 6 to 3. The only play as Carlos Santana will take second base with two outs. Key Brian Hayes is retired. Out number two. And that brings up Jack Sawinski, the left handed hitter, which means now the shortstop Barrero is responsible for holding him on. So if you get another ground ball shortstop X, that will come into play. Havoc roll. Nothing happening. All right. Two outs. Hunter Green to Sawinski. 5-9 against a left-hander. And that's trouble for Hunter Green. An in-home run chance on a 1-12 to or a double on a 13-20. to Jack Sawinski against right-handers has normal power. So this would be a home run on a 1-12. to Otherwise, it's an RBI double on 13 to 20 and there's no rob in the home run here because there's no out chances it's either going to be a home run or a double so 1 to 12 we got a two run shot and that is long and that is gone jack zuwinski takes hunter green deep for a two run bomb two out two run homer from jack zuwinski and the pirates lead it 2 to nothing here in the top of the second as he got all of that one and did not miss it hunter green Pitched him a fat pitch right down the middle, and he didn't miss it. So now two outs and the bases are cleared for G1 Bay. And now with the bases clear, we don't use the Havoc roll. Don't need that. We go straight to the regular bat. 3-6 against the right-handed hitter is a ground ball to first. And that will retire the side. But two runs come across the plate on the two-run homer by Jack Sawinski. And we go to the bottom, and my pen's not going too well here, is it? Or my Sharpie, I mean. My Sharpie's not very sharp. But the Pirates do lead it 2 to nothing. as we go to the bottom of the second. And hopefully I'm going slow enough, but not so slow that people are falling asleep. It's kind of a... i got to remember that I've done it before, and other people might be new at this, and so i got to try to slow down as best I can. All right, do up for the Reds. Will Myers against Mitch Keller. And again, I'm not doing the... But this time I will just for the heck of it. I'll roll and roll the D20 with the other dice because that's what a lot of people do. And I, I mix it up. It depends on my mood, basically. So roll the dice and we get a 4-2. Keller's a right-hander, or Myers is a right-hander. So a 4-2 is a ballpark home run chance. It says 1-14, to but we're going to ballpark home run chance. And we've already seen... That on a ballpark home run chance, it's a 20. So there's not there's nothing you can do about it. And with a right-handed batter, you cannot rob home, rob home runs in left field at Great American Ballpark. So we don't even check for robbing the home run. This is gone. It is long and it is gone. Will Myers has connected and put the Reds on the board to cut the lead to 2-1. to one. So Great American Ballpark is a band box in good weather, which is what we have. And it's a... Pretty much almost a guarantee home run. So two to one ball game. And that'll bring up Spencer Steer, the third baseman. Keller, 5-3. And a 5-3 is a fly ball left field X. So now we're going to go to the left fielder for the Pirates. And that is Reynolds. So we look at Brian Reynolds. He's a three and a, and a minus three. Or, I'm sorry, E3. Three and an E3. So we were on the infield defensive chart. Now we've got to turn it over and go to the outfield defensive chart. And he's a three. So we go over here to three. So anything here, one to seven. One to, I'm sorry, one to six. One to six is a single. Seven or higher, he makes the play, assuming there's no error. So we can roll and see if we get a one to six. Or higher than a 6. We get a 14, so he does get to it. Now, does he catch it? He's an E3. So we go here to left field error rating. Left field error rating, E3. Means we need a 3, 18, or 15 in order for him to make this, or make an error. And actually, I didn't fold this up good enough here. He can actually have a 3 base error if he was higher error rating. But a E3 only goes to 2 base error. But there are some 3 base errors as you get higher up in the error ratings. But right here, with a 3, it's a 3, 18, or 15. 
So 3, 18, or 15 on the total of the D6s. And we get a 10, so he will make the play. One down. Nice play by Mr. Reynolds. So Steer is retired. One down for Will Benson. Benson is the left fielder. We get a 1-7, and that's a straight-up strikeout. Two down. A lot of these super advanced game plays just like the advanced. There's just certain situations that require a few extra steps, but it's not really once you get once you do it, it's not that bad. So here's Jose Barrero. We got a 310. We got a one, but noise on base, there's no wild pitch chance, obviously. 310. 310 against a right-hander. That's a 1-9 to nine for a home run, and guess what? That's a home run. So Jose Barrero goes deep. The number 9 here, two solo shots, and the Reds have tied the game. And, boy, Great American Ballpark is the band box today. Home run for Barrero. He only had two on the season, but the one he needed was at 310 or 312. That's where you get the home runs, so... There you go, two and 133 at bats. So tie game, and here's Jonathan India. We get a six-six, and that's going to be trouble again against the right-hander. One to eight's a double, nine to twenty is a single. That's an 18, so it will be a single for Jonathan India. A single for India. Now he did steal last time, so they're definitely going to hold him. The question is, does he try to steal again? And again, he needs that six. That's the only thing that will do it for him. But if we roll a one or a, a one on the D20, he might get picked off. But they're going to try it anyway. There is no six, but there is a one. So it's a chance for a pickoff. That worked out perfectly. I got Friedel here. I don't know why that should be India, not Friedel. My bad. India is the guy on the bases. So it's a one, which means it's a chance for, for a, a pickoff. So to determine pickoff, we go to the secondary number, which is an 11. Reroll the D20. On a 1 to an 11, India will get back. We roll a 12 or higher. Mitch Keller has picked him off. And that's a 14, so India gets picked off. And that's how the pickoff works. When you roll a 1 on the D20 trying to get the jump, you just don't take the jump all the time because you might get caught doing it. And there you have it right there. He did get caught doing it. So he stole second in the first inning. He gets caught stealing or picked off. We'll call it a pickoff. 1 to 3 to end the bottom of the second. But the Reds do take two runs on the two solo homers to tie the score at two after two. So hopefully that was not too fast the way I did that. Let me go through this again. When we rolled for the lead, we got a one on the D20, and that triggered a potential pickoff. To check pickoffs, you don't go to the first number, you go to the second number. Reroll the D20. If it's higher than that number, he gets picked off. If it's less or the same, he gets back. Since we rolled higher than 11, he got picked off. So hopefully that, um, hopefully that made sense. All right, so Austin Hedges, the number nine hitter, steps to the plate for the Pirates. And we get a 1-7, which is a fly to center. Now, there is an omega symbol here. There's a clutch rating in Super Advanced, but it only takes effect when there are two outs and runners are in scoring position. Neither of those situations exist. Had there been a runner on second or third, and had there been two outs, this fly out would have changed to a base hit. So that tells that's saying that Austin Hedges is a, is a clutch hitter because he would turn this out into a hit. Some other guys that are not clutch hitters would turn hits into outs. But in this case... Since it's not a clutch situation, it's just simply a fly to center. And there is one away. So we'll go back to the top of the order for O'Neill Cruz. Grounded to second, his first chance up. And we'll see what he does on his second chance. 2-8. That's going to be a walk. I don't know how well these computer cards show up on my phone here, but that's a, that's a walk. 2-8 is a walk. So O'Neill Cruz will draw a one-out walk. Now let's check his running here. He needs a five to get a jump. 
If he does, it's a 20 to get, he would get a 20 if he gets a jump. 13 would be his number to get back on a pickoff if you want to try to descend him or whatnot. But he would need a five to go. He had three stolen bases, none caught, and 32 at bat. So that means that means to me he runs a lot. So we're going to try to get the jump and see if he can't get a steal. But he needs a five to do it. Did not do it, and there's no one or two on the D20, so he will simply hold there. So he, he will be held on, but cannot get the jump, so he's stuck at first base. And Brian Reynolds is your batter. Reynolds is a switch hitter, batting left-handed, which means the shortstop, Barrero, and the first baseman, Vossler, are the two that are responsible for holding the runners with a left-handed batter up. So first things first, roll the Havoc. There is no ball, There's no one or two, so no chance of a pass ball, wild pitch, or balk. So now green to Reynolds is a 1-4. That's a ground ball, second base C, and on the C, runner on, the runners automatically advance, just like they do in advanced or basic. So in this case, it's a ground ball to second base, but the only play India had was to go to first. So with two outs, O'Neill Cruz takes second base. He is in scoring position for Andrew McCutcheon. And now, with a righty up and a runner at second, the only guy responsible for holding the runner on is the second baseman, India. So India will hold the runner on as we roll for it. Havoc and nothing's happening. So India, the second baseman, is the one responsible for holding the runner. We get a 4-6. Four, 4-6 six. Four, six is a walk against the right-hander. So Hunter Green issues a free pass. So now two on and two out for Carlos Santana. Switch hitter. Santana walked and scored. His first time up, he scored in front of that home run from Zawinski. So now, strategy roll again. Nothing happening. Or Havoc roll, you don't want to call it. All right, again. But now, I'll take it back. Santana's a switch hitter. It means he's batting left-handed against the righty. So now the shortstop, Barrero, is responsible for the runner. We get a 4-11. 4-11 is a ground ball first base X. First baseman is not holding this runner on because he's got a guy in front of him. So this, he's not going to be affected at all. It's a ground ball, first base, X. So we go to the first baseman for the Reds, and that's Jason Vossler. Still not very good. He's a 4-E-4. So his range, his error is pretty good, but his range is terrible. So he's a 4. So let's look and see what number he needs to make this play as a first baseman. As a first baseman with a 4, he needs a 1 to 7. I'm sorry, a 1 to 6 to get by him. 7 or higher, he makes the play. 3 is going to get by him. So bad break there. So on a 3, on a number 4, that's an SI2. That means a two-base advancement. It's basically a single plus-plus. And now we need to check for error. He's an E4. An E4 means we have to have a 14 or an 18. So he's got to avoid a 14 or an 18 which he does, so there's no error on the play, but it will be a single two stars. Scoring is O'Neill Cruz. Going to third is McCutcheon on the single by Santana that he put right past Mr. Vossler, and the Pirates grab a 3-2 to two lead. 3-2 to two lead, and that brings up Smith and Jigba. Runner at first, Santana will not be held. They're not going to hold him on. Now, Tabby's back in here again. Let me pause the video. Okay, so Smith and Jigba is your batter. Again, runner on first. They decided not to hold the slow-running Santana. Havoc roll. No one or two, so nothing going on there. Now, Smith and Jigba. Green, 1-4 to Smith and Jigba, and he strikes out against the right-hander, so he is out of there to end the inning. Pirates do pick up a run, though, on the two-out, two-run single, or two-out RBI single by Santana. And the Pirates lead it 3-2 to two as we go to the bottom of the third. And hopefully for people that are newer at Super Advanced or have not seen it before, hopefully I am doing enough to not confuse the heck out of you. All right, Mitch Keller will now face Jake Fraley. 
I'm sorry, TJ Friedel, because he was at the plate when India got picked off. So Friedel is out there. He was at the plate when they picked, remember, uh, India got picked off trying to get a lead to start or to end the bottom of the second. So TJ Friedel is your batter against Keller. 5-8, he is a lefty. 5-8 is a strikeout. So Keller gets the K on Friedel. One away, and that brings up designated hitter Jake Fraley. And I cringe when I say that because playing the Pirates and the Reds, it just shouldn't be a DH, but that's a whole other discussion for another time. 1-4 for Fraley against the right-hander is a fly ball to right field, out number two. And there's a B question mark, and if we get to that situation, we'll talk about it. If we don't, I'll add it on at the end if I can remember to do so. Trying to cover everything that could possibly come up in a game. But obviously in one game, you can't, you're probably not going to get every single opportunity for everything to come up. Here's Stevenson. 4-11 against a right-hander is a fly ball to right, and that's going to end the inning. So a 1-2-3 inning for Keller. And at the end of three, it is Pittsburgh 3 and Cincinnati 2. Pretty sure Cincinnati won this game in real life, but that's just for informational purposes only. It doesn't really matter for this demonstration. Here is Key Brian Hayes. 3-7, and that's going to be a pop out to first base. So he pops it up to Vossler at first base for out number one. And that'll send up Jack Zawinski. He hit a two-run homer his first time up. Two-run home run for Zawinski on his first time up. Hit the home run off of Hunter Green on a ballpark check. Zawinski against Green now, 6-7. He's a lefty, 6-7, a 1-9 to is a double. Anything else to fly to center? That's a 19, so Zawinski will fly it to center field. We're out number two, where he's taken in out there by Friedel. So he hit it well, but not well enough, and there's two down for Jiwon Bay, second baseman. He grounded to Vossler at first base in his first at bat. Green, 2-7 to Bay. And that's a fly to center again. He got the Omega, but there's nobody on base. And there's, there are two outs, but nobody's on base, so it doesn't really matter. It's just a fly to center, and that's going to end the inning. So we finally get a 1-2-3 inning. Out of Hunter Green and keeps the score at three to two as we go to the bottom of the fourth. I realize this video is going to probably be about an hour and 45 minutes long, but that's okay. That's okay. All right, so Jason Vossler struck out his first chance. Let's see what we can do a second time around. 1A is going to strike out again. So Vossler 0 for 2 with two Ks. And that'll bring up Will Myers. Two eight for Will Myers, and that is another strikeout. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Keller. And that brings up third baseman Spencer Steer. Four six, and that's a solid single for Spencer Steer off of Mitch Keller's card. Single to left field. So Spencer Steer gets a two-out single. And this is a possibility for him to try to get a jump to steal. He would need a six, but if he can get in the scoring position with two outs, that would help. So it's a six that he's looking for, but again, you got to watch out for a one to see if he gets picked off. We get a 11, nothing else happening. He does not get the jump, so he will stand pat. Now, he could try to steal, but he would go back to his secondary rate, and the hole would be a minus four, which would drop him to a seven. And then a minus one from the catcher and pitcher combo would make it a six. So he could still steal, but he would need a 1-6 to six to be safe. And obviously the odds there are not in your favor. So they're going to hold him there with two outs for Will Benson. But we'll do the Havoc roll with the runner on base. Nothing happening. Will Benson, he is going to be held. Will Benson, the lefty, so that means the shortstop, O'Neal Cruz, and the first baseman, Santana, are both responsible for holding the runner. 6-10. Now, 6-10 is an injury for Green, not for Keller, because he could not be injured. 
So 610 is a walk. So Keller, while he's not injured, he did walk Will Benson. And so a single and a walk have now put two on with two outs. And that brings up Barrero, who homered. He homered his first time up on that 3-10 roll, I believe it was. So Keller's obviously going to try to hope that doesn't happen again. Nothing on the Havoc roll. And now with the right-hander up, the second baseman, second baseman Bay is doing the holding here with the runner in front of the guy on first. First baseman is playing back, so he's not responsible. Only Bay is at second base. 5-6 against the right-hander. 5-6, ground ball, shortstop A. It would be a double play, uh, but since there's, runner, since there's already two outs, we're just going to call it a 6-4 to four fielder's choice. At least that's the way I deem it. And that's going to end the inning. So the Reds leave two on base, come way empty-handed. At the end of four, it's still Pittsburgh three and Cincinnati two. And now we get almost, we are at the pitcher fatigue factor. So we can lead into pitcher fatigue. He's got a number here. Every starting pitcher has a number in parentheses, which is his fatigue rating. This kind of goes in advance, too, so I'm not really saying anything that advanced players don't know. Uh, Five is his fatigue, so we start the fifth inning, and after three, a combination of three that totals hits, runs, walks, things like that, once you get past that, then he becomes fatigued, and any dot result changes to a hit. So we've got to be cognizant of that. And with no DH, you don't have to worry about when, you know pinch hitting for him, so you kind of keep him a little bit longer, although on opening day, you kind of want to, you know, to be realistic, you don't really want to overextend him, so... This might be his last inning anyway. We'll see how effective it is. Here's Austin Hedges. 1-5 for Hedges is a solid single to start the top of the fifth. That's one dig against Hunter Green. Now, Hedges is an E-stealer and uh, he stole one base during the season, but he's not a threat to steal. Usually catchers don't really go anywhere, so we're not holding him on. So there's nobody, nobody being affected because nobody has to hold him on. So... Nobody's affected. Neither the first baseman nor the shortstop are going to be affected with this. So Hedges singles. That brings up O'Neill Cruz. But we will do the Havoc. Can't forget that. Three, nothing happening. So here's Cruz. He grounded the second and walked. Green to Cruz. 3-10. That's a ground ball second base B with a plus, but nobody's holding anybody on. So simply what that is is a ground ball to second B for a field choice. So Hedges is out four to six, sliding into second base, and O'Neill Cruz takes over as your base runner. Now Cruz, being a good base runner, they will hold him on. I uh, don't think he's he's not going to try to steal, but they will hold him on, and that means first baseman is responsible for holding the runner, as well as a shortstop because the next batter Reynolds is a switch hitter batting left, so that means Barrero is also responsible for holding the runner. There's not one out. And green with the Havoc. Nothing happening there. Green, 5-6. Switch here to left. 5-6. A 1-6 is a triple. 7 or higher is a fly out. That's a 17, so we got a break there. It's simply a fly to right field for out number 2. And with the run on first, they can't go anywhere. So he stays put. 2 down for Andrew McCutcheon. Nothing on the Havoc roll. Green to McCutcheon. 6-3. And that is going to be a 1-18 double. 19-20 flies to center. That's a 3. It's a double to center field. And now can the runner score? Remember, he was being held. But we'll see if he can score or not. There are two outs. So that also helps his cause as well. So being held, let's look at his run rating first of all. O'Neill Cruz runs. At a 17, there are two outs, makes him an 18. Or let me check, because I get confused. Sometimes on games you get a plus one, sometimes you get a plus two. I'm thinking it's plus one, but it might be plus two. Like I said, I haven't played Strat in a while. And he's a little, when you play three or four games, sometimes uh, those little factors can sneak by you, and I don't want to get it wrong. So let me make sure I got this straight here. Before we do anything else, 
Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Where does it say that in the rule book? There's got to be somewhere in the rule book that says it. See how prepared I am, right? Okay. I should know this stuff by heart, but I just haven't played Strat in a while. That's my problem. Playing all these other games, sometimes you don't play a game for a while and the rules start to, to meld together. I'm thinking it's a plus two, but I could be wrong on that. We're going to go with plus two. So I think that's what it is. It's plus two. As far as I can tell, it's what it is. It's plus two. So it's going to be a plus two is going to be added to his run rating. So he was a 17, makes him a 19. The double is assumed to go to center field because the position is not listed. So that means double goes to center field. We need to check the center fielder arm. Center fielder is Friedel. His arm is a zero. It's a zero. So right now we've got a 1 to 19. But he was being held, so it takes the two away. So really that cancels out with the two outs, the holding the runner. So it's a 1 to 17. 1 to 17. I'm sure it was clear as mud. He's a 17. He gets the plus 2 because there's two outs, but he gets minus 2 for being held. Makes him back to a 15. And the center fielder is zero arm. So it's a 1 to 17. 1 to 17. Now... In Super Advanced, there's also cutoffs here. So, does Cincinnati want to risk throwing him out at the plate? If they go for the runner at the plate, then McCutcheon, the batter who just hit the double, will get third base. But there are two outs. So, having a guy second and two outs or a guy third, two outs is really not that big of a deal. So, they will take the chance and try to get the runner at the plate because they really want to cut that runoff. If we get a 18 or higher, he is out. 17 or lower, it's a... RBI double, and McCutcheon will take third on the throw. And he takes third on the throw. So it's a double plus a McCutcheon will go to third on the throw. It was a bad gamble, but they felt like they had to take it out of desperation. If there were only one out, they wouldn't have done it, but since there were two outs, they did it. So McCutcheon will take third on the throw. It's an RBI double, and the Pirates now lead it by the score of four to two and green is really put getting ready to push his fatigue number right here bullpen activity for the reds has already begun in earnest and they're looking at let's see who's coming up for they're looking at buck farmer a right hander loosing in the reds bullpen all right havoc roll nothing happening carlos santana the batter Nobody's holding the runner on third, so nobody needs to worry about being held. 1-8, and that's a ground ball to first, and that's going to end the inning. So that's why they sent. The, that's why they did the throw through, because they figured with two outs, they could get out of it with one more batter, and it really didn't make that much difference. And that's the way it turned out. But the RBI double from McCutcheon makes it a 4-2 to game, and that's going to be it for Hunter Green. He's done. Buck Farmer will take over in the sixth for the Reds. But uh, Hunter Green, not the best opening day that he was hoping for. He is on the hook for the loss unless his team rallies. So Hunter Green is going to go five innings. And he's going to give up four runs, all of which were earned. And let's see how many hits he gave up. One. Two, three, four. I got him for four hits. He did walk two. Actually, he walked three. That was part of his problem, was walking three. Struck out one, two, three. Struck out three. Okay. So five innings, four hits, four runs, one, uh, three walks, and three strikeouts. And he is on the hook for the loss. Mitch Keller has a six by his name. So he's not affected at all by any kind of fatigue. He's just going to enjoy his 4-2 to two lead and try to pitch through it. And Jonathan India, who is 2-2, two two, two singles, but he's also stole a base and got picked off. 4-9, and that's going to be a fly to center field. And they finally retire Jonathan India. One away for T.J. Friedel. 
five, three, and that's a fly ball left field X. Left fielder is Reynolds. So again, I look at his card. He is a three E three, so pretty good. But the first number we're looking at is the three for his range. So we look at the range and see if he catches the ball. And most people do this all at one time, but for demonstration purposes, I'm splitting it up. Range and error. You can obviously roll all four dice at the same time, but I'm just for demonstration purposes doing it separately. So again, he's a three. So one to six, it's going to be a hit. Seven or higher, he will get to it. Thirteen, it means he gets to it. It's actually going to be an F2. And now we're going to see if we get an E3 or not. His E3 number, again, for an outfielder, is a 318 or 15. So he's got to avoid 318 and 15. And he did not. That's a 15. That will be an error. An error on Friedel in the outfield. Error on Friedel. As we get the 15, that's actually a two-base error. So we're going to go to the... We're going to go to our chart under F2 and an E2. It says two base error runners advance two bases. So it's a two base error on Reynolds as he put the glove up and just kind of nonchalanted it and uh, it tipped off his glove. And so a little sloppiness there. Didn't use two hands like he's supposed to. E7, two base error. And that'll send up Jake Fraley and of course Mitch Keller looking over or out into left field wondering what the heck is going on. So you're in the major son you're supposed to catch that. All right so now runner being held left-hander means he's being held by the shortstop Cruz. 311 and that is going to be a ballpark single check. He's a lefty. Ballpark singles a one to eight. That is a six. That is a six, so it is a ballpark single, successful ballpark single. However, for the Reds, it's only a one-star advancement, single one-star, so the runner cannot score. He only goes to third, but the tie and runs are now on base with only one out. Runners at the corners with only one out for Tyler Stevenson. But he's a double play candidate, so they got to be careful about that. He could easily end the inning with a double play. And they are playing for the double play. Fraley is being held at first. He's a pretty good base stealer, but down by two, they're not going to want to take the chance. They're just going to keep him there. But he will be held, which means the, short, the second baseman and the first baseman are engaged with holding the runner. Keller, 6'11". 6'11 is a walk. So that's going to load the bases. So now all of a sudden Keller's in trouble. The bases are loaded. With the bases loaded, nobody's being held on now. It's just simply a bases loaded situation for Jason Vossler. And now you wonder if the Pirates bullpen might stir a little bit. They might be looking for somebody to warm up. And that there is going to be some activity as Contreras is loosing in the Pirate bullpen. Havoc roll for Keller. Nothing happening. Infield is back. They're trying for the double play. They'll give up a run to get the out. 6-9 against the lefty is a strikeout. There is a dot there, but he is not tired. So the strikeout will stand. The big one, Vossler now has the hat trick. He struck out all three times in this game. And in real life, he struck out 25 times in 62 at-bats. So he is a whiffing machine. So two down now for Will Myers. Keller trying to get out of this. 3-7, and he does. It's a ground ball, first base C. A little inside rule that the community has, I think, is when it's a C, that means the first baseman fields it and flips to the pitcher covering. So we're going to call it a 3-1 ground up just to give it some variety. And Mitch Keller pitches out of that mess. The Reds leave the bases loaded. And they are leaving a lot of guys on. They left two guys on in the first. Now they leave the bases loaded. So if they lose this game, the old LOBs might come back to bite them. As they miss a golden opportunity to get something done. All right, so new pitcher for the Reds is Buck Farmer. So we'll scratch him off to say he's been used. Buck Farmer is your new pitcher. 
and it's also going to affect the hold rating. He is a plus seven, so it really is not going to affect anything. It's plus five is as high as you can get. So even though he's a plus seven, you can't get a higher a higher effect than a plus five. So um, so plus five it is because the catcher Stevens is a zero, make it a plus seven, but you can't go up that high. Five is as high as it'll go. All right, so we start at the top of the Sith six rather with Smith in Jigba, and he's over two with two Ks. Farmer, 4-7 against a left-hander, is a walk. So Smith and Jigba will walk. He's not a very good base runner. They will not hold him on, and he will not think about going anywhere either. So he's on with a leadoff walk. Not a good start for Mr. Farmer. Infield at double play depth, and Key Brian Hayes. Nothing happening there. 2-3 for Key Brian Hayes is a ground ball shortstop A. That is a 6-4-3 double play. Pitcher's best friend. And Mr. Farmer needed it in the worst way. Two quick outs. That erases the leadoff walk. And now with two quick outs, that'll bring up Jack Zawinski. Zawinski is homered and fly to center. 6-5. Five for a left-hander struck him out. So Farmer, after giving up the leadoff walk, comes back to get a double play and a strikeout to end the inning. So we go to the bottom of the six, still four to two, in favor of the Buckos. All right, Mitch Keller is out, and this is inning number six. So now he is in his fatigue inning. So he has to be careful. And now, actually, they've got some left-handed action in the bullpen to the Pirates. Lefty Jose Hernandez is loosening in the pen, just in case. Keller needs help. Here's Spencer Steer. 5-7. Keller against the right-hander. It's ground ball, second base X. That's Jonathan India. I'm sorry, not Jonathan India. It's G1 Bay because Pittsburgh is in the field. He's a 3-E-22, so we're looking at a 3 right off the bat for our range check. And again, a 3 on a range check, 1 to 6. I'm sorry, 3 on a range check, 1 to 4 is a hit. Anything higher than a 4, he gets to it. He will get to it. Now the question is, is he going to make the play? His air range is an E-22, a little bit high. So E-22 for a second baseman. Not too bad, actually. 12, 18, or 17 are the error chances. 12, 18, and 17. And we get a 15, so there's no error chance. Actually, a 14, rather. Yes, I went to public school. I can add up. So that's a 14, and that will be okay. So nice play there by Mr. Day, and there's one away. Here's Will Benson. 2-9 for Benson is a strikeout. So Keller still going strong. Two quick outs for Jose Barrero. Barrero did homer first time up. 1-6. This time he will strike out to end the inning. Boy, Mitch Keller, six solid for Mitch Keller. And he's going to stay in there a little bit longer, I think. Because he had nothing against his fatigue chances. He's at least going to start the seventh. He may not go through the seventh completely. He's going to start the seventh. Here's Buck Farmer. Farmer only gave up a walk, so he, he still got some pretty good fatigue chances to go. And G1 Bay is going to lead it off. Start the top of the seventh. Three, seven for G1 Bay is a ground ball to second, and that's one away. It's a plus sign there, but nobody's on base, so it didn't affect anything. One down for Austin Hedges. One six for Hedges is a one to nineteen. I'm sorry, one to ten single. That's a six, so it will be a base hit for Austin Hedges. A one out single for Hedges. He will not be held as a poor runner. He is not going to be held on, but he is two for three so far, and that will send up Cruz. And now the Reds have bullpen action. A left-hander in the Reds' bullpen is loosening. And that left-hander is Alex Young. 
Alex Young, the lefty, is loosing in the pin. Havoc roll first of all. Nothing happening. Cruz against Farmer. 3-4, and that's a ground ball second base B. Ground ball second base B, but nobody's being held on. So it's going to be a fielder's choice. Cruz will take over at second base. It's going to be a 4-6 fielder's choice. Now there are two outs for Brian Reynolds. Cruz will be held on. He will not try to steal, but he will be held on. So again, with a switch hitter batting left, that means the shortstop and the first baseman are responsible for holding the runners, or holding the runner, as they say. Farmer to Reynolds, 2-4, and that's ground ball second base C, so it's going to be a 4-3 ground out to end the inning. So nothing doing there for the Pirates here in the seventh. Seventh inning stretch time, and I'm going to stretch with everybody else because this is Longer game than usual because of the way it's being played out. That's all for Buck Farmer. He's going to go two innings. We'll do the totals for him. Two innings, and he gave up one hit, no runs. He did walk one, and he struck out one. So pretty good for Buck Farmer. But his day is done. And actually, it will be a right-hander, not a left-hander. It will be... Derek Law will be coming in to pitch for the Reds in the set, top of the eighth. Derek Law will be the new pitcher. So, Mitch Keller will now be getting... Well, first of all, I'm going to stretch like I said I was. <laughs> oh, I need to stretch a little bit. We're at an hour and 16 minutes, so I definitely need to stretch a little bit. And hopefully this is coming out okay. Hopefully I didn't have any bad... Uh, Sometimes you put stuff in front of the camera, it makes things a little fuzzy. Probably it's been fuzzy the whole day, and I haven't the whole video, and I just now saw it. So I apologize for that if that's the case. I won't know until it uploads. And it'll probably take a while to upload with this long video. But anyway, Keller, Keller is going to come back out to face Jonathan India, but they have lefty action in the bullpen, Mr. Hernandez, and he's probably coming in next. So I think this is the last batter that Keller's going to face. They want Keller to face uh, India, and then after that with the lefties coming up, they're going to go to Mr. Hernandez. So right now it is India. Keller facing India. 1-4 is a ballpark single check, and it's a 1 to an 11. That's an 11, so it will be a base hit for Jonathan India as he ekes it through for a base hit. He will be held on, but down by two runs, he's not going to try to steal, and that will be all for Keller. So Keller's day is done, and Mr. Hernandez, a lefty, will be coming on for the Pirates. Can't close the book on Keller because the runner on base is his responsibility. And with the new pitcher, we got to remember to update the pitcher-catcher hold factor. Hernandez is a plus five, where Keller was a zero. So he's a plus five, and the catcher, Hedges, is a zero is a minus one, so that's a plus four. So you got a plus four factor now instead of the minus one they used to have, it's a plus four. So that might change things. Let's see. But he's got to get the jump and he got picked off. No, they're not gonna they're not gonna take that chance. Down by two runs. They don't wanna they don't want to do that, I guess. All right, so India is aboard on a single. And the new pitcher, Hernandez, is in to face TJ Friedel. Nothing on the havoc. And again, he is being held. Left-handed batter, so that means shortstop Cruz and the first baseman, Santana, are responsible for holding the runners. 5-9, lefty on lefty, 5-9 is a ground ball shortstop X, so Cruz is affected on this. So if we get the pound sign, that means it's going to get through for a hit. So we'll check O'Neill Cruz and see what his defensive prowess is. Not very good. He is, it's probably hard to see on here. He's a 4-E-20, so it's a 4. So this is going to probably get through for a hit most likely. 4 and a 5 guaranteed to be a hit, I would assume. Four and a five. Four and a five is an S1. S1. So it will be a hit. The question is, is it going to be an error to add insult to injury? Cruz's error range at E20. 
E20, and we get a 14. E20 and a 14 for a shortstop. E20. There's a 15, 16, and 17, but no 14, so we got a break there. But it will be a single, one star, and it's going to put runners at first and second. With nobody out, and back come the Reds. Here's Jake Fraley, and I'm using the three batter rule since we're playing modern games. So Hernandez has to face three batters. Contreras is loosening in the Pirate bullpen a right-hander, but he can't come in until Hernandez faces his three batters. So now Fraley is your batter. He's batting left-handed, so the shortstop again, Cruz, is responsible for holding the runner. Nothing on the Havoc roll. Hernandez to Fraley, lefty on lefty. 2-9, and that's going to be a line out to third base by Fraley for out number one. So he hit it hard, but it was snagged over there by Kebron Hayes, Key Brian Hayes for out number one. Brings up Tyler Stevenson, and he's got some pops, so he could certainly put the Reds in the lead with one swing of the bat. Could also hit into a double play. And since he's right-handed, that means the second baseman Bay is responsible for holding the runner. 1-5 against the lefty. He's going to strike out, so it becomes academic on who's holding the runners. That's two down. So here comes Jason Vossler. Now he has faced three batters, so they could remove him, but since Vossler's a lefty, they're going to stick with him. Now the question is, do the Reds pinch hit? I think they will. The Reds, I believe, are going to go to the bench for another first baseman, or a pinch hitter, I should say, to replace him. And they're going to bring in Kevin Newman, and Newman will stay in the game to play first base. So Newman, Newman is going to come on to pinch hit, and he will stay in the game to play first base. So Newman is now your new... First baseman. And that's all for Vossler. He, Vossler was over 3 with 3 Ks, so Reds want some offense. And they bring Newman in to try to get it. Now the Pirates could counter with Contreras, but they're going to stick with Hernandez, who's gotten the last two guys out. So they're going to see if Hernandez can suck it up and finish out the inning. Nothing on the Havoc. Second baseman Bay, again, is the one responsible for holding the runner. 1-9. One, 1-9. Nine, one, nine. Hit by pitch plus injury. Of course, I'm not doing injuries because it's as played. So Newman is hit by the pitch. And it's going to load the bases. And that will do it for Hernandez. He will leave as he had trouble. And Contreras will try to get out of the mess. The right-hander. So Newman, a pinch hit by pitch. Pinch hit by pitch. That's an interesting way to look at it. A pinch hit by pitch. And has loaded the bases with two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. A base hit could tie the game. Extra base hit could give him the lead. So we go to the Pirate bullpen. And go get the right-hander. Rosny Contreras. I know it's Contreras is the last name. I'm not sure about the, how to pronounce the first name. I'm going to call it Ro, Ronzi, Ronzi Hernandez. Ronzi Hernandez. Uh, Contreras. I don't know. Something Contreras. We'll put it that way. We'll just call him Contreras. And his hold is a plus eight. So that's going to make this a plus five. But they're not worried about holding the runners now. They're worried about getting the runner out. Will Myers is your batter. Myers hit a home run his first time up, but his not done anything since. Nothing on the Havoc. Nobody's being held on because the bases are loaded. Contreras to Myers. 1-2 is a walk. He's going to walk in a run. So the Reds creep back closer. And that run is actually charged to Keller because that was India who started off the inning. And he's, he's Keller's responsibility. So now we can close the book on Keller. Keller has given up three runs. Three earned runs on in six plus innings, and he gave up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits. I've got him for, and walks one, two, three. Got him for three walks, strikeouts one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine. I got him for nine strikeouts. He's still eligible to be the winner if the Pirates hold on, but right now it is a four to three game. And Spencer Steer is your batter. Base is still loaded. With two outs. Contreras, nothing there. Trying to get Spencer Steer out. 4-7, and he walks in another run. So back-to-back -back walks. Contreras has come on and walked in two runs, and we got a tie game. And now Hunter Green is off the hook for the loss, and Mitch Keller cannot win it. We are tied at four thanks to back-to-back -back walks, but you can't pull him because he's only faced two batters. So he's got to face Will Benson before he can remove him. So Contreras trying to get out of this mess and not blow the lead. Two, a chance for a balk or a pickoff. That's where we're going to roll the one white die. If it's a one, two, or three. It's a balk chance. Four, five, or six. It's a pass ball chance. It's a two. but So we check his balk rating, which is a zero. So he has no chance. I'm, it's no chance to a balk at all. So no chances there for any kind of balk. So we just ignore it and move on. We get a 2-8. 2-8 for Benson. Struck him out to end the inning. And the Reds again leave the bases loaded. Second time they've done that. But they do tie the game thanks to two bases loaded walks. And at the end of seven complete here at Great American Ballpark, we are tied at four apiece. And Derek Law will be, that's, that's going to be it for Contreras. He's done. Derek Law will be your new pitcher for the Reds. He will be coming on. And, of course, the new first baseman is going to be Newman. And due up for the Pirates is McCutcheon. So Law is a plus one hold rating. With Stevenson being a zero, which means he's it's a plus one factor for the hold rating for Law. As we start at the top of the eighth, it'll be Andrew McCutcheon. Santana and Smith in Jigba. At least those are the scheduled hitters here in the eighth. Tied at four. Three six. That's a strikeout for McCutcheon. He's out of there. One away. Brings up Carlos Santana. One eleven for Santana, and that's a ballpark single. Now, if this fails, since this was a single, I will do the line out to second. If it fails, single check left hander one to eight. That's a 13. It fails. So that's going to be a line out to second base. That's where I will use that instead because there, otherwise it's a base hit. There's no other place for it to be an out. But like I did earlier, if it shows an out, then I'm going to stick with whatever out it showed. All right. So Smith and Jigba, he's going to be pinch hit for by the Pirates. They're going to find somebody else that can play right field. And it's going to be Connor Joe. So Connor Joe will pinch hit and stay in the game to play right field. Connor Joe. Connor Joe. Connor Joe. So Connor Joe was on to face Derek Law with two outs in the bases empty. One, two, and that's a split. I'm glad I got to this. Super advanced. There is this triangle. In advance, this one two would be a straight single to right field. Super advanced, the triangle splits the result. So when you get the triangle, you come down here and look at the D20. One to 13 in this case is a single. 14 or higher is a line out to short. That's a three, so the single actually stands. But I had forgotten about the triangle result, but there it was right there. So Connor Joe, a pinch hit single. Not a very good base runner. They're not going to. He's not going to try to steal. They will hold him on. He's good enough to be held on, but that's about it. So Connor Joe with a base hit. And here comes Key Brian Hayes. Nothing on the Havoc. So first baseman Newman and the second baseman India are responsible because he's a right-handed hitter as far as holding the runner. 4-4, four, four, and that's a fly ball center field X. Center fielder in this case is Friedel. So let's go look at Friedel's defensive rating. Friedel is a 2-E1, so very good. 
Friedel a two means he's got a very good chance to get to this. We'll check the range result for an outfielder on a two. The only way this drops in for a hit is a one, two, or three. Any other result, he will make the catch. One, two, or three. It's a 17. He gets to it. Now, the only way he makes an error on an E1 for a center fielder, E1, the only way he makes an error is on a 17. That's the only number that can happen. Anything other than 17, he makes the play. And he does. So, nice play there by Mr. Friedel. Saves extra bases and gets the Reds out of the inning. We go to the bottom of the eighth, tied at four. We'll see if Law stays in. I think he probably will. Well, actually, no. They're, most of these guys, this this time of the this day and age in the bullpen, are one inning guys. So we'll just leave it at that. And now let's see who's going to come in for the Pirates, and it will be out of the bullpen. It will be Colin Holderman, a right-hander. Colin Holderman will be coming on for the Pirates. Holderman, the fourth pitcher used by Pittsburgh. So Holderman, let's see what his hold rating is. He's a plus three, so the plus three and the catcher hedges is a minus one, is an aggregate plus two. Alrighty, so it's plus two going forward. So leading off the bottom of the eighth will be Jose Barrero. Number nine hitter. 2-5, and he's going to strike out for out number one. So one down, and that flips the order over to Jonathan India with Friedel to follow. And that's be just what I need to this long, drawn-out video to have extra innings would be just be ice on the cake, wouldn't it? 2-11. Two 2-11 two is a ground ball to second. Easy play there for Bay. Two up and two down for TJ Friedel. Four eleven left-handed hitter. Four eleven to fly to center. It's a one-two-three inning for Holderman, so he will definitely pitch the ninth as well, as he had no effect against him. And now we go to the top of the ninth, tied at four, and the Reds will get a new pitcher. Let's see who they want to go to. Out of the pen, Pirates have a couple lefties coming up: Sawinski and Bay. So the Reds will go to another, the other, the lefty they have not gone to yet, Alex Young. He had warmed up earlier and sat back down, but now he is in. So Alex Young, a left-hander, is in the game. Young is a zero hold rating. So is Stevenson, so it's a zero effect. And Jack Zawinski will lead off the top of the ninth, tied at four. 6-11, that's a ground ball to first. And if I, like I said, if I was checking injury, I might do that, but I'm really trying to get through this. I'm not worried about injury at this point. 6-11 is a ground ball to first, one away. And that brings up Jiwon Bay, second baseman. 3-4, and that's going to be a walk. So Jiwon Bay draws a one-out walk, and he's a good base stealer, so... He will try to get the jump. Now, he can get the jump on a two through six. So we roll a two through six. He gets the jump. But again, the D20 could be a one, which would cause a pickoff. But a two through six, he will get the jump. He does. It's a five. So he gets the jump. No one there. So he does get the jump, which means he starts as an 18. Being held makes him a 16. Then you put the pitcher and catcher together. We figured out it was a zero. So it's a one to 16 for him to be safe. And he is. So G1 Bay will steal it. He walks and steals second base. Gets himself into scoring position with one out for Austin Hedges. And they will pinch hit for Austin Hedges with Jason DeLay. And DeLay will stay in the game to catch. It's a much better hitter. So DeLay will be in to pinch hit for Hedges. 
in the Reds bullpen is right-handed, the right-handed, uh, actually their closer, because in the top of the ninth, as the home team, when you're tied, you can't get a save anymore. So let's see, their closer was Alexis Diaz. He had 37 saves. So he is now loosening in the bullpen. He's a plus eight hold rating, though, which can be troublesome. So, and again, Young has to face three batters, so he has not faced three batters yet. This is his third batter to face, so he's got to at least face him before you can take him out. Nothing on the Havoc. Here's Young to delay. 2-8, and that's a double to right field by delay. That will give the Pirates the lead. A double to right field, and the stolen base comes into play. He might have scored anyway, but right now the Pirates take a 5-4 to four lead. And that's going to do it for Mr. Young. They will bring in their closer, Alexis Diaz, to try to keep it from getting out of hand. Try to keep his team in the game. So Young had his issues. Went a third of an inning. Gave up a hit and a run. He's on the hook for the loss at the moment. Delay will not be hold, held on second base. He will stand pat. O'Neill Cruz is your batter. Havoc roll. Nothing going on. Diaz to Cruz. 4-4, four, four, and that's a strikeout. So Diaz gets the strikeout of Cruz for out number two. And now it's Brian Reynolds. Nothing happening. They're not holding the runner at second, so we don't have to worry about anybody being responsible for holding the runner. Diaz, 3-7, and that is a 1-5 to five double. 6-20 to 20 is a fly to center. That's a 4. Brian Reynolds with an RBI double. And that's icing on the cake. That run is also charged to Young. He's going to be saddled with two runs charged to him. And the Red, uh, Pirates now lead a 6-4 to four as the Reds fans are grumbling. And David Bednar, the closer for the Pirates, is loosing in their bullpen. He will come in to pitch the bottom of the ninth. But Diaz has to finish out the inning without any further damage. Here's McCutcheon. 1-5, and that is a clutch. That is a single, but it's clutch. And with there are two outs of runners in scoring position, so the single is taken away on the clutch. And I'll show that in the rule book as well with a clutch. We go here to clutch hitting. This is on page 13 as well, 30.7. It says clutch hitting. If the original reading is any type of out, make it a single. Uh, let's see here. If the original reading is a single, make it a pop out instead. So it's a pop out to shortstop because he's a right-handed batter. So it's going to turn to a pop out to short as that was like anti-clutch, I guess you want to call it. But the Pirates take a 6-4 to four lead. And Young is might be saddled with the loss unless his team can rally. And right now, the Pirates are going to turn it over to their closer, David Bednar. Bednar on the season, 39 saves, 3-3 three and three with an ERA of an even 2. So Bednar is on to try to close the deal for the Pirates. His hold rating is a minus 3. And the new catcher, Jason DeLay, his arm is a plus one, so that's an aggregate of minus two. So with minus two, it's going to cut down on any potential steal chances, you would think. For the Reds, it'll be, although you're down by two, you're probably not going to steal anyway. So we have Fraley, Stevenson, and Newman. Not a whole lot on the bench. Two backup catchers, Casale and Maley, aren't very good. They also have Fairchild, Stuart Fairchild. He's so-so, but not very impressive. Highest average on the bench is 235, so you're probably better off sticking with what you have. So Bednar now will be facing Fraley. 6-7, that's a strikeout for Bednar. One down. Brings up Stevenson. Four eleven for Stevenson. 4-11 against the right-handers. A ground ball to short. Two down. Last chance is Kevin Newman. 
He was hit by a pitch in his only appearance as a pinch hitter. 6-4 as a fly ball center field X. So center field X chance for Mr. Zuwinski. Jake Zuwinski, or Jack Zuwinski, I should say. Jack Zuwinski. Let's get Zuwinski's card so you can check his rating. Jack Zuwinski is a 4 E1. So he's not going to make an error almost certainly, but a 4 in center field can be problematic. So in the outfield, a 4. Anything 1 to 11 is going to be a hit. The only way he catches this is on a 12 or higher. So if this is a 12 or higher, the game's probably over. It's a 4. It's going to drop for not only a base hit, but it's actually going to drop for a double. DO2 is a double. He's an E1. We'll make sure there's not an error. But I don't think there's going to be. Nope, there's not. So it's going to be a double. A two-out double for Kevin Newman. And the Reds still have hope. As Zawinski was not able to get to that, now the tying run is at the plate in the form of Will Myers. And Will Myers, some power, not a lot, but boy, he's anti-clutch. Look at this. Three chances here against right-handers. Singles turn into outs with two outs. So boy, you're tempted to pinch hit for him here. Let's see. What has he done in the game so far? He did homer, but he's been 0 for since. So they're going to bring in Stuart Fairchild to pinch hit. They don't like the clutch factor or anti-clutch factor, I should say, on Myers. So Fairchild will pinch hit to try to keep the game going. It is up to Fairchild to get it done. Have a roll for Bednar. Nothing happening. With leading by two, they're not holding the runner because his run doesn't matter. They're not going to hold him on. Bednar, 2-3, and he ground ball to first, and that's going to end the ball game. Will Myers on a 2-3 would have flown to left, so it didn't matter anyway. Santana grabs it, flips to Bednar covering, and there is your ball game. The, this one does not belong to the Reds, as the Pirates win it by the score of 6-4. to four. So I will pause the video, come back with the totals, and I may try to go over a couple of super advanced rules that did not come up in the game just to show you how they are done. All right, back at Great American Ballpark for the final totals. For the Pirates, six runs, eight hits, and one error. For the Reds, four runs, nine hits, and no errors. Winning pitcher was Colin Holderman, and the losing pitcher was Alex Young with David Bednar securing the save here on opening day in Cincinnati. All right, so... There you go. Hope you enjoyed that uh, super advanced some sort of slow playthrough. Now, a couple things I did want to go over because we never really got to sacrifice bunts, hits, and runs, and stuff like that. Um, I could do that here, or if somebody wants to see, I, I may do it on a separate video. That might be better because a lot of people may not even get this far. <laughs> they probably turned it off by now, so they may not see this. So what I'm, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is take the things that didn't come up in this game and do those on a demo video, kind of a demo light version uh, to finish off the everything that I think should be looked at at Super Advanced that was not talked about here. Uh, we did talk about the wild pitches, uh, you know, to pick off runners. We talked about the hole rating, talked about defensive stealing, talked about ballpark home runs and base hits, talked about clutch, talked about the split chance with the triangle. So I think a lot of it got uh, taken care of. But like the B question mark and the hit and run and the bunts, those things, those kind of things did not come up. So I think what I'm going to do on a separate video um, a little bit later is go over those specific areas. Um, or may about just wait till opening day of the uh, 73 season and go over it then. I don't know. Put in the comments if you want to see something in particular, and I'll, I'll go over it again. Uh, if you want to see stealing again, getting a jump again. Um, then I'll just take whatever's in the comments and I'll make a video out of what people are asking for. Uh, but in the meantime, this game is over. The Cincinnati Reds fall to the Pittsburgh Pirates by the score of 6-4. to four. Um, Enjoyed it. Haven't played, like I said, I love Supermatic, Super Advanced Stratomatic. And I'm really excited to get back to it. I like my other games too. My Inside Pitch, my Payoff Pitch, uh, Fall Classic, History Maker, and Season Ticket, and Payoff Pitch. I uh, like all of those. Um, status Pro, you can throw it in there as well. 
I like all of those, but my bread and butter is Stratomatic and my bread and butter is super advanced. Just haven't done it in a while. So this is actually, I played one practice game before I did this. So I probably should have played a few more, but I had other things going on. So I kind of just had to put this out. I don't want to wait too much longer because April 6th is opening day of the NBC Game of the Week 1973. So I'm going to be going full force at that point. But uh, hopefully, uh, I tried to go slow enough to, but I probably end up going too fast anyway. I'm, I most likely probably did. Uh, but hopefully, you guys got something out of this uh, as far as super advanced goes. If there's something, you know, hopefully the stealing is a little bit clearer now. If it wasn't clear before, hopefully the clutch is clear. Hopefully the ballpark. Uh, singles and home runs are clear. Hopefully the defense is clear. Uh, pitcher fatigue, any, you know, whatever you want to go over or ask about. But uh, that's going to do it from here. I decided to record this instead of doing this as a live stream because I didn't want to be distracted by chat questions and whatnot. And I wanted to be able to pause the video if I needed to and really concentrate on what I was doing. Um, I can always come back and do a second video on a live stream and and keep, take the accoutrements all out of the way and just go bread bone you know bare bones with the rule book and 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 player cards and the charts the dice and score book and take all this other stuff out of the way and just go through some examples i could always do that as well but sometimes watching the, the game in action and seeing it played uh even without explanation sometimes is a good way to learn the rules i was hoping that this would uh be a little notch above that where I was actually trying to explain what was going on. So uh, hopefully it turned out okay. We shall see when I upload it. Uh, let's see how long this video is going. I'm at an hour and 46 minutes. That's pretty long. So if you're watching this, I'm going to upload this on Saturday. I'm recording it Thursday night. Um, but I'm going to upload this on Saturday, uh, the 23rd of March. So hopefully if you're watching this on Saturday. You made it this far. If you've made it through the whole hour and 45 minutes or 46 minutes, congratulations, and I appreciate it. Um, but again, just put in the comments what you'd like to see me do that wasn't done, or if you want to see something done over again, um, anything like that, uh, let me know, and I'll try to you know, take all the comments and make one big video out of it just on what was being asked for. And try to do just a how-to on certain things. But I thought seeing it in action would be a good way to get the ball rolling anyway. So that's going to do it from here. Again, appreciate you taking your time to watch through this and go through all this. And until next time, enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play. However you choose to play it. And I will see you all down the road. Have a good day, everybody.